everyone, welcome to the program. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Easton, and this week we have a culture packed show for you from the rousing opera of Europe to the mysteries of East Asia. We'll explore them all right here in the UAE. We're out and about in the capital, Abu Dhabi, taking part in the celebrations for that most important of Chinese holidays, the Lunar New Year. But first, a highlight of this year's Abu Dhabi classic season is Richard Wagner's The Valkyrie, brought here all the way from its home in Germany. And directing proceedings on the ground in Abu Dhabi just happened to be Wagner's great granddaughter. Never before has the full version of Richard Wagner's opera The Valkyrie been staged in the Emirates. One of the 19th century German composer's most popular works, it's a story of angered gods and defiant Valkyrie maidens, based on a Norse mythological tale where twins separated as children meet as adults and fall in love. In a multimedia millennial spin, the Emirates Palace performance saw a feature-length film play throughout a departure from the more traditional staging at the opera's permanent home since the 1870s at Germany's Bayreuth Festival. The annual musical gathering is heralded for its world-class star-studded performances of Wagner's operas, and tickets have waiting lists of up to 10 years. Charged with conducting the opera in Abu Dhabi was Marcus Poschner, who says that Wagner's enduring appeal has much to do with the composer's playful manipulation of classic ensembles and chorus singing. It's a different sort of telling a story, telling to, 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 to telling emotions. A Wagner opera is a quite different thing compared to a Mozart opera, for example, because we have this, um, this guideline. It's never interrupted. It's, there's no aria and no recitativo. It's always telling a story. And it took five or four hours to come to the end. According to Poschner, it was Wagner's unique musical language, plus his heavily detailed set and costume designs, which saw him set new benchmarks for his genre into and beyond the 20th century. He changed the world completely. The, uh, the day, especially after Tristan, for example, uh, was uh, everything was, was in a different shape than before. And I think all the composers, you can mention Brahms, Bruckner, Strauss, for example, they couldn't, they, they couldn't exist without Wagner. I think he's, like 50 or 60 years before Beethoven, he was, it's like a revolution, revolution in music. Spearheading the direction of the Abu Dhabi show is Wagner's great-granddaughter Katerina. Poshna says her modern creative vision melded perfectly with his musical interpretation, adding that he felt the responsibility to deliver something spectacular with the descendant of the great maestro in the room. I think it's a very personal approach to this uh, opera. Uh, she did. Um, her staging is, is amazing, it's really stunning. And it's just for me, it's a little bit difficult because I'm really so busy conducting the orchestra that I couldn't look to the stage and to all the things uh, going on around me. So um, I wish uh, just sitting there and, and look to, to the set. Before the curtain lifted on the Valkyrie in the capital, Katharina took time to speak to Inspire. Katharina, a very warm welcome to Inspire. Thank you very much. The Valkyrie was first staged in Bavaria in 1876. This is the first time we've seen it fully performed in the Middle East. Why was the timing right? We worked for, for four years on this project and we brought our special orchestra here because our orchestra is very special. It's not a steady orchestra. There's the musicians which normally come together in the summer from all over Europe. I was so happy to exchange our cultures, so I think it was a very good opportunity to show here the German culture, and I'm glad to see here some culture of here. The opera's original home, its permanent home, is in Germany, in a custom-built theatre designed by Wagner himself, not least for its acoustic qualities. Do you therefore have to adapt the opera when you take it on tour? 
And no, it's a concert version, but um, Abu Dhabi Classic had this wonderful idea to let a movie run in the background, which is especially uh, produced for here and is showing the and is showing the story of the Wagner. And for those unfamiliar with Wagner's work, how would you sum it up? How would you reduce it? Well, it's dramatic and I think it's emotional and that's um, interesting, you know. You can go by science to music, you know, and um, you can characterize it by science. But the most important thing is that music is touching your emotion and that Wagner does. Music is coursing through your veins, given your famous forefathers. But do you believe that musical talent is inherited or can be learned? It's difficult to answer because I, I grew up with it, so this is a difficult question to answer. I'm so used to it that I just know it very well. My parents never made pressure that was good. Um, you know, they just um, let me choose what I wanted to do, but I was fascinated from the first moment on. Your great-grandfather was arguably his harshest critic, and society had a lot to say about his performances too. How do you view criticism, especially from the press in today's society? Well, um, you know, in Bayreuth we are only playing Wagner. We are operas only specified in Wagner. And, um, of course, we try to develop everything and new, uh, every time a new interpretation of Wagner's work. So, um, that's the way we work. We try to make a good and interesting new interpretation every time we perform it. We wish you all the best. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. For the past five years, Abu Dhabi has helped celebrate Chinese New Year with a series of events. This time around, there will be lion dancing performances, drum shows, and plenty of food offerings. Salim Saeed explores China's spring festival traditions and looks into those increasingly important trade ties between China and the UAE. Each year, an estimated 400 million people travel across China to mark the Lunar New Year with their families, to celebrate the annual Spring Festival that lasts on average two to three weeks. As for Chinese residents in the UAE, they're painting the capital red and yellow, where red symbolizes luck and joy, and yellow represents prosperity. In Dubai, thousands in traditional dress turned up for the Hela China Grand Parade to watch Chinese dragon dancing and more. Back in Abu Dhabi, Kung Fu artists kicked off a series of performances, including traditional drumming shows and the ancient acrobatic form of lion dancing. Performers mimic eight of the animal's traits, from suspicion and anger to playfulness. The Chinese believe the lion to be a symbol of good fortune, safety and wealth creation. The recruiters of the artists wanted performers who would take conventional lion dancing to new heights. These guys can go up to six meters high, standing on each other's shoulders and, you know, jumping around and, and, and doing flips and stuff like that. So it is, it is actually fa a fairly dangerous uh, activity, but it's a highly skilled activity. And all that exercise is hungry work. And in Chinese culture, New Year's meals are filled with special meaning, with dishes such as lucky dumplings containing hidden gifts for children and a popular fish plate called Nyan Nyan Niu Yu, a play on words in Mandarin where fish in abundance sounds similar, and where it's customary to leave some fish on the plate to symbolize surplus in the coming 12 months. I sat down with the head chef of this set menu to find out why it's favorable to have an eight-course meal on New Year's night. So number eight is always the, our Chinese the lucky numbers. For the, we, everyone like eight. So everyone, like you choose mobile number, car number, house number, always the people choose for eight. In the spirit of encouraging good luck, we ate a raw fish and vegetable dish called Yi Sheng, which translates to a prosperity toss and involves diners raising their chopsticks high in the air and making wishes for the new year. So we did just that. Okay, good health, good fortune. The Chinese community celebrating the new year in the country's capital make up hundreds of thousands of people who've made the UAE their home and place of work. The trading and social ties between the two countries is one that continues to grow year after year. For 35 years, China and the UAE have enjoyed diplomatic relations, with annual trade agreements reaching more than 53 billion in 2017. China is the UAE's second largest trading partner and biggest source of imports. The Emirates accounts for about a quarter of China's total Arab trade and is a gateway for about 60% of their exports to the Middle East, according to Reuters. 
The Gulf nation plays an important role in Chinese President Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative to invest in infrastructure connecting China by both sea and land to markets in Asia and Europe. Last year, the head of state was the first Chinese leader to visit the UAE in 29 years, and he announced 13 agreements and memorandums of understanding during his stay. China's ambassador to the UAE says the trip was an historic one. And that means in the future, the two countries' relations will be cover every field, the political, economic, science, uh, education, cultural, and so on. Another sector of growing importance, says the ambassador, is tourism. In 2017, uh, there are about one million Chinese tourists coming to UAE, and uh, the number increased uh, in 2018. It's about 1.1 million. This year, uh, 2019, surely should be a big increase in for the Chinese tourists coming, and uh, maybe another 10 to 20 percent increase. With a new influx of Chinese visitors to the UAE, the ambassador hopes that relations will continue to blossom in the spirit of the new year. Well, that is a wrap of our show. We hope that you enjoyed it. And don't forget, you can catch all of our episodes online at euronews.com. Before I leave you, here are some social media posts that caught the attention of the team this week. Irina from Russia attended the Valkyrie in Abu Dhabi, saying that it was fantastic, ageless music and libretto that will always inspire. Tatiana from Siberia explored the Chinese New Year activities in the UAE capital, commenting that the festivities were a great way to get to know the Chinese culture better. And Yichen from Taiwan uploaded this image of people in Dubai marking the Lunar New Year, highlighting how red is a color associated with luck and happiness for so many Chinese around the world at this time.